I hope you guys aren't getting tired of Green Lantern content. Well, there's this guy known as Guy Gardner. He's another Green Lantern type character other than Hal Jordan and Kyle. He was basically the second person to be nominated by Evan Sears Green Lantern ring. But Hal Jordan was chosen due to him just simply being closer. So he was always worthy. You know what I mean? But eventually down the line, he was given a ring of his own and became a part of the Green Lantern. But the thing about him, he's a douchebag. He's arrogant. He's kind of obnoxious. So it's best that he wasn't the main Green Lantern. He doesn't need to be like the, the so-called the Green Lantern of the world, right? He's a good side Green Lantern, I would say, right? But he's still up there with the other powerful ones, right? He even became despised by the Guardians at one point and fellow heroes. He has amazing power though, indomitable will. He eventually matured and got over this like this little frat boy nature mentality. He got into meaningful relationships with his fellow heroes, becoming a well-respected Green Lantern at one point in the Green Lantern Corps. You can see how strong he is, but before I go any farther, I really appreciate those that have donated to the channel. It really does help out a lot. I mean, he's a Green Lantern, so let's just jump right to his speed. Travel speed, fighting speed, the Green Lantern ring enhances reflexes, auto shield, just like the other Green Lantern videos I have. You know, that type of thing. Naturally, he has raw travel speed, like being able to catch up to the ship despite the ship having a head start you can see like it's implied light speed travel you see him passing stuff really quickly even though he was shot in the arm that did not seem to matter still able to be super fast regardless of all of that and look at that nice construct claw construct it was even stated that this ship can move at light speed because of speed of light technology he does the same thing to a ship that's flying at warp speed he can just catch up to it this is casual stuff with green lanterns green lanterns have speed feats of moving in the quadrillions of times the speed of light so of course he can do these things of course he has battle feats with other green lanterns deflecting attacks from other Green Lanterns like Howard Jordan, you know, fighting speed as well. Baseball bats, construct creation. They just go light speed, just casually cruising around the place, you know. He saved this person from a high speed alien laser one time. Remember that one time he traveled multiple light years in like a couple hours? <laughs> That's just ridiculously massively fast and light speed, yo. Not to mention he was carrying two passengers, one of them being meant the man who myth the legend himself. Naturally, the Green Lantern ring gives him super strength. Duh. But how strong? Well, this is the difference between his blast power and his just physical. I'm talking about physical strength. Flexing his muscles. You know, he can make a construct around his body, kind of strengthens his body's durability and stuff like that. Right? Like in a battle feat, fighting, you know, other Green Lanterns, like breaking their constructs by making like a Green Lantern suit around him increasing his strength and striking power and stuff like that never forget that he broke out of constructs being made by multiple green lanterns showing that he is a top tier green lantern there are no named green lanterns but then there are named green lanterns and guy gardner is one of the named ones along with kilowog hal jordan he's stronger than most green lanterns right his striking power he could do is to kill a wall with a punch, put him on the ground, even though he's bigger than him. If they was to both fight without their rings on, then kill a wall would have the advantage physically, but A, the ring is the equalizer. Does this through a building, fights this team buster despero type of character through a building, bullshits him. If you don't have respect for him after this, I don't know what will. This dude literally matched Lobo in a freaking arm wrestle. Lobo. Yes, you heard that correctly. The Superman's here. Battlefield wise, he's battle characters like Booster Gold. He was stood up blast by Cyborg Superman that was amped with multiple rings just because of raw power. Guy even got into battle with, that's right, you guessed it, Blue Beetle. Willpower has always been the ultimate counter to like mind manipulation. Other Green Lantern folk cannot probe Guy Gardner's mind. I mean, he even broke free of the mind control in this particular occasion. It's a telepathic Green Lantern honor guard. I mean, he was able to overpower Sinestro's soul in like a pure battle of willpower. So if you have your doubts about him being a top tier Green Lantern, it's definitely respected that he's a top tier. Okay, somebody help it make sense. Tell me why he was able to overpower somebody's construct. Ringless. Yeah, I said it. No ring, just thanks to pure willpower. They stay here. I knew that it took strength of character to command this weapon. Then you see the knife gets thrown here. Then it just goes the other way. Like, what the heck? States, he even states, be stronger than her. And that's what happened. He even states in his mind, man, that was much harder than I almost lost it. So he had to do something with willpower related, right? No ring, by the way. The guy has so much willpower. This is how they described his ring. They even state, Gardner's ring is like a leaky water faucet. Sparks almost fly. Even when he's still just standing still, his willpower can't wait to get free. Like, that's how much willpower he's got. Yeah, don't res respect Guy Gardner's willpower. This guy resisted an antimatter virus that was on some reality warping type stuff, and he was able to fight through it. Heck, it even attacks the freaking nervous system, but he resisted all of this thanks to just sheer willpower. Can you respect it or what? He forced his mutant telepath out of his mind. Gots to respect the willpower. 
And yet another occasion resisting telepathy. You guys get the point, man. They're Green Lanterns. There was this guy powered by a ridiculous amount of t telepaths, and he was still able to resist it. You know he's one of the top tiers when it comes to willpower. He was able to resist Parallax that had the power to control the entire Green Lantern core, except for a few exceptions like Kilowog, Guy, and Hal. They were the exceptions. That shows they're resistant. And the reason why they're the named ones. Look at all that. It kind of gives you a reason on why they are one of the top tiers. There's this one time he was restrained by some technology. Every time he uses his ring, it blasts him so he won't even attempt to break out. But even this was not enough to contain his power. He just overloaded it. <laughs> Too much power. <sighs> Oh, believe it or not, you can be a trash green lantern if you have terrible accuracy. He actually scored a 99% on like a training exercise just to show his raw skills and precision. Of course, green lanterns, one of the things they shine at is their blast power. He was able to destroy the constructs of multiple green lanterns with one singular blast. And when it comes to one of the most powerful beings in the universe, Martian Manhunter, a Superman tier, he was able to do that to a Superman tier. Beware my power. Blast him back. And another battle with Hal Jordan, he blasts through his shield in this occasion with one blast, so he is comparable. Even if you would say Hal Jordan got the advantage, that's fine, but he's definitely still in the range. Like, say if Hal Jordan was 100, then Guy has to be like a 90 or something. He's not that far behind it still. On a good day, he might get a W here and there, depending on how he thinks it out, strategizes the fight out, stuff like that. Another case of his blast power, this team busts the Despero being that always be giving Superman tears a run for the money. Superman himself, even Martian Manhunter a run for the money himself. He's able to shield from characters like Despero. These super powerful droids, Omax, he was able to shield from an explosion that was capable of killing three Omax. A little bit longer panel of him blasting, taking attacks from Blue Beetle. Another pretty strong character I got a video on, by the way. Literally shields from a blast from three lanterns. Three on one, baby. Look at all them lanterns. Still can handle it. This big old alien ship, he could just obliterate it with one blast. And probably one of his best feats of all time, it's implied that his beams can cause pain to Superman. Usually, I don't usually take drawing blood feats or pain feats seriously, but Green Lanterns are consistently shown to be able to harm Superman to some degree, even if they're not necessarily equal, you know what I mean? They're still able to cause pain to him. That's probably one of his better feats, even if we don't see him actually destroy a whole planet. This is probably better than destroying a whole planet, just harming Superman. Bringing down large buildings to him is light work. Look at that big construct drill. Guy Gardner was able to make a shield so big and powerful that it took the combined force of seven Green Lanterns, right? Including Hal Jordan being one of them. They all working together like in this little maze jungle gym type of thing. Keep in mind that Kilowog and John Stewart was a part of this group. Kind of shows how Beastie is fighting this many Lanterns. Even some of the top tier Lanterns. But they did eventually break it because they had Hal Jordan and John Stewart. I mean, they had Hal Jordan and John Stewart in the construct. I mean, that's only fair. They're like two of the top tier ones. So them breaking it is fine. But it's the fact that it took all of that. <laughs> He flattened his giant robot with a construct punch right here. Like, it's literally flat in the background. This is, like, awesome to look at. He does this to multiple Green Lanterns. Another case of him fighting multiple Green Lanterns. Battle feet. Blocks. Punch. Reacts. Holding his own. Blast. Against several at once. Guys, he's a beast. And he got in a little scuffle with Despero. He's able to harm characters like Despero with his punch like that. Send them flying. Epic. You guys gonna learn today, boy. Sends Hal Jordan into the sky like this little rocket construct. Battle feet again, showing that he's up there with them, that he's not lightweight. In comparison, even blows him up to the point where he looks like dizzy, as you can see in this panel here. So he's like causing major damage, took major damage from that. He does this to Blue Beetle with a drill-like construct. He likes making baseball bats. <laughs> this one time destroying this large spaceship with a baseball bat while he's on a motorcycle in space. Really? And Guy Gardner, you're literally on a motorcycle in space? Okay. This ship was big, though. He can create massive constructs that he even made a construct so big it dwarfed an alien warship. The construct in itself was like a little weapon that blasts other ships. <laughs> like, that's freaking big. He even states, try picking on someone your own side. He was able to catch a space station and throw it into space. He has one of the most versatile powers, of course, because he's a Green Lantern. He can phase through walls with the Green Lantern ring. In his case, with Shazam. Can even track people with his ring. Follow radiation trails. Can protect others from telepathy it alerts him from magic because of buzzing like vroom. during the doomsday clock event guy gardner's a troll right so he literally like talks to dr manhattan but like makes constructs of all the different biggest baddies dark side anti-monitor doomsday brainiac stuff like that sinestro then actually tries to punch him but that didn't go too well but hey that's dr manhattan though don't judge him for that there was even a time where guy gardner got kicked out of the core for a little bit and used sinestro's stolen ring quadarian battle ring he was able to block an attack from booster gold use the like construct steel catches up to characters like the ray being made of pure light who can travel at the speed of light was able to catch up to him in his light form that's raw speed 
may like his little yellow construct here grabs him yet again moving or catching up to a starship moving at inconceivable amount of speed like they just zipping raw speed baby he bunches an alien through a crap ton of asteroids look at all that like goes through that one that one that one <laughs> goodness he beat of a thousand of the galaxy's toughest fighters no that is not a hyperbole like come on bring it on he says like look at that long line of fighters he's even gotten scuffles with doomsday took a few attacks from doomsday even though he did indeed kind of get overpowered blast from maxima taking strikes from lobo without just completely losing instantly and remember, he arm wrestled the same being. He stayed conscious after all of this. Scuffle. Nice scuffle with Lobo. Takes blows from the Eradicator in a synthetic body of Superman. This guy's usually considered a Superman tier. Around that range, you gotta respect it. Battle armor to shield himself from him in this scuffle. And yes, he can make skyscraper-sized constructs, even in the yellow. Heck, the guy was even able to harm Lobo in this scuffle with Lobo. So you gotta respect him to some degree. Superman tiers, right? There was a time where Guy Gardner's DNA was infused with a shape-shifting race known as the Voldarians. By the way, he fought major force in this state. He was pretty powerful. That's a Captain Adam tier being for those that don't know. Here on this occasion, he caught this arrow reflexes. Superman says it himself. He hits as hard as Doomsday, maybe harder. Better fighter too. Guy Gardner like this was crazy strong. Superman is easily a planet buster, lightweight to him. Heck, he even one shot booster gold this one time. Deathstroke staff. Isn't necessarily enough to put him to sleep. Got in a scuffle with Aquaman himself. Yeah, that's straight up on scuffle with Superman. <laughs> he endured being punched into space by Power Girl. Let that sink in for a second. Well, I did say he's a shape-shifting alien Volgren, right? So, I mean, he shapeshifted his arm into, like, a gun to hurt Major Force. Turns his hand into a knife sharp enough to kill Major Force. His shape-shifting bodies can even adapt and absorb fire from fire and Blue Devil. Yes, he can actually fly. It's implied that he might have two hearts or he kind of just regrew his heart can one say uh i think we can agree as insane uh regeneration right in this new state this is not like his permanent form though guys just keep that noted one of those temporary power up things and he does this to major force with his blast power as an alien who do you know that can produce handheld bombs that can produce equivalent force of a nuclear blast i mean he turned his arm into spikes <laughs> this dude is a trip right so tell me why there was a time where he you know got rings backs right obviously in a new 52 area he actually had a green lantern ring and a red lantern ring at once Oh boy. He can do like that thing like Atrocities be doing, that vomit where he can blast out of his mouth. He does this to a whole bunch of Green Lanterns. He does this to Guardians with his vomit. Like, this is broken. Does this to a whole bunch of Green Lanterns, including Kyle Rayner. Once again, this is like a temporary power up. Overpowers an Indigo tribe, a Star Sapphire, fighting them all at once. Even a bunch of Green Lanterns with this. And of course, this was during the Blackest Night event. His constructs can even rip apart Black Lanterns. The raw power, right? Man, he rips up some Yellow Lanterns. This dude's a savage. He even made them eat it. Freaking savage. Sheesh. He was able to evade blast from Mogo, though. You know, the living planet. Guy Gardner has always and always will be comparable to other Green Lanterns, like Kyle Rayner, for example, who all have their ridiculous feats of containing star explosions, stuff like that, with their constructs. So Guy Gardner should be in this range, even if, if you want to say he's still weaker. He ain't that far weaker. He's like, what, 90% of this or something like that, right? Kyle Rayner has also feats of like universal ish or multi galactic type stuff. Like containing the destruction of Imperiax, the embodiment of Entropy, who has multiple galaxies worth of energy stored inside of him. Remember other top tier Green Lanterns like Jon Stewart, who, you know, Guy Gardner has fought and scuffled with in these panels in the same video, can literally create a star system or a solar system out of constructs like stuff with massive amounts of size with just their willpower. Not to mention that Guy Gardner is quadrillions of times faster than the speed of light because they can traverse the entire universe in a very short amount of time. No matter which era it is, rebirth, post-crisis, pre-crisis, they're just all ridiculously faster than light. It's just, it doesn't really matter to really distinguish between different eras or retcons because they're always going to be that fast. That's just how it is at DC at this point. Guy Gardner has scuffled with these same lanterns that can do feats like this, so he should be in that range. I mean, he freaking matched Lobo in the arm wrestle, for Pete's sake. He's even tangled with Jon Stewart, Hal Jordan, and Kilowog all at the same time in this little jungle gym construct. It took all of their might to break it, so yeah, he definitely should be in their ranges of power, Hal Jordan being one of the top tier Green Lanterns. And yet, Guy Gardner is still able to hold his weight, even though in this particular occasion, 
they did indeed break out though he should be in those black hole ranges with characters like john stewart at the bare minimum one could even say multi-galactic depending on how you want to look at it i mean sheesh he doesn't have the most flashy feats like we didn't really see him like blow up no planet or nothing but he should be leagues way past the planetary ranges just from being remotely comparable to characters like lobo or even characters like hal jordan his performances against lobo john stewart hal jordan kyle rayner in this video breaking through hal jordan's constructs in this same video and we already know what the stuff that john stewart has done i even have a video about john stewart so that gives you an idea of why guy gardner should be in those ranges or black hole ranges at least one could even say multi-galactic depending on how you look at it you know what i mean it's all up to your interpretation yeah definitely in the black hole ranges but post your comments down below let me know what y'all think did you know guy gardner was this strong doesn't have as many showings as the other lanterns but hey that's how it is when you're not the main guy in the spotlight but post your comments down below and make sure you binge watch more stuff on this channel like this so i can see you guys later hopefully i see you on the channel in the future respect guy gardner <laughs>